going to derive the change in velocity formula for a rocket that ejects one unit of propellant. All right, so let's start with a couple of facts. By considering a rocket that ejects one unit of propellant, let's go ahead and draw it out. And so what does conservation of momentum tell us? Well, conservation of momentum says before equals after. Momentum before equals momentum after. That means we can say if the rocket is at rest before, its momentum is zero. And if it's moving with some velocity v after, we can say its total momentum after is mv minus, since the propellant is in the opposite direction, minus the mass of the propellant times its velocity. And so now, of course, we can solve for what this velocity might be. If I go ahead and designate the rocket's velocity to be change in velocity, like delta v over there, well, what can we do? Well, we can rewrite this as such. We can say, move this term over to the other side so that the mass of the propellant times the velocity of the propellant equals the mass of the rocket times delta v. And so we can solve for the velocity of the propellant, and that's going to be the ratio of the rocket's mass to the propellant's mass times delta v. Okay, so this is the first equation we're going to keep in mind. Okay, this is equation number one to keep in mind. Okay, so we're going to keep this in reserve. We're going to write it on the top in red. We're going to write the velocity of the propellant is the ratio of the rocket's mass to the propellant's mass and multiplied by delta v. Okay, so that's, that's important fact number one. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and use this factor advantage to find the total kinetic energy of the system. Let's go ahead and derive that. And so now what can we do? We can just go ahead and factor out this common factor, right? Half m delta v squared. So if I go ahead and factor that out, half m delta v squared, what am I going to be left with? Well, I'm going to be left with 1 for this term over here. And for this term, I'll be left with the mass of the propellant. Since this cancels out, what do you see? This mass cancels out with this square. And so I'll be left with mass of the rocket divided by the mass of the propellant. That's going to be the total energy, the total change in mechanical energy of the system. Okay, the change in mechanical energy of the system is going to be half the mass of the rocket times delta v squared times all of this, uh, this term right here. Okay, so now we're going to define the fuel efficiency of the rocket. Okay, let this constant, let's say there's a constant alpha measured in joules per kilogram. So that's the amount of Kill, that's the amount of energy that can be successfully converted to propellant for the rocket, okay? So alpha is going to be equal to what? If I multiply alpha by the amount of propellant I have, which is in kilograms, I'll simply get the change in mechanical energy, which is in joules, right? You can check out the dimensional analysis. Joules per kilogram times kilogram still gives us joules. Okay, great. Now, we're going to use this to our advantage. How so? We're going to set this equal to this, okay? Set these two terms equal to each other. Let's, let's get our new chalk right here. And so if I set these two equal to each other, what do I get? I'll get this whole shebang is equal to alpha times the mass of the propellant. And so now I'm going to solve for delta V squared, okay? So it's going to involve quite a bit of algebra, but let's get to it. We're solving for, if you don't recall, we're solving for delta V. So let's go ahead and solve for delta V. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and that is what we've been looking for. We've been looking for this exact term right here, delta V. This is the 
amount by which the rocket's velocity will change after it's ejected one unit of propellant. And in fact, we can use this even further. Remember this equation right here that we were asked to remember? We can just go ahead and plug in delta V right here to find what the velocity of the propellant will be. So let's go ahead and do that. And so we can say the velocity of our propellant is going to be the mass uh, the ratio of the mass of the rocket to the mass of the propellant times delta v and of course we know what delta v is it's the root of two alpha times the mass of the propellant divided by the mass of the propellant times one plus m over mp and that ladies and gentlemen is the end of rocket science 101 thanks for watching this lecture if you have any questions or comments leave them below we'll check you out next time